So on the latest installment of how many projects can I do all at the same time, I am uh, resuming progress on building some nicer speakers for Sarah for listening at her house. Currently she has like a Bluetooth speaker on her TV for like movies and music and stuff like that. So it's time to step her up to something um, a little more enjoyable and, and louder to listen to and something that'll work for movies and music and she can connect to her TV. So <clears throat> I got this uh, DIY build a kit offline and it was supposed to be floor standing tower speakers. It was gonna have uh, two of these uh, six inch mids and a tweeter built into it. Um, but after issues with shipping and uh, damaging the, of the, the cabinets and water damaged, um, I wound up just sending the cabinets back and turns out that space wise for how she's rearranged and decorated that uh, bookshelf speakers um, will be a better compromise for um, her setup anyway. So I'm in the process of building these and getting these all together and getting them wired up and um, getting the crossovers built. The issue I'm having is that because originally the design called for two of these uh, mid woofers here in parallel uh, eight ohms a piece down so that would make the bring on the four ohms removing one and and just using a single one in the cabinet uh, brings that impedance back up to eight ohms and that affects how the crossover behaves specifically the frequency crossover point changes with the impedance change you're changing the impedance by double so that actually doubles where the crossover point of um, the, the, the crossover works. So in the process of putting this all together, I'm also trying to get through the math to decide what I need to change as far as the components to compensate for the change in impedance. Uh, I'm asking some help from some experts online because it's not just a matter of just doing the math because the impedance curve on speakers are not flat. They are shaped in a, in, a, in, a, in a unique way where they come up and they rise in their, they, that's why they call it a nominal impedance because the average impedance is what it is, but it changes their frequency. So as this impedance changes, the frequency shift of the crossovers, it's, I, don't know, I think it's gonna affect a lot of things. So I'm gonna try to work on that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping that I can leave the tweeter circuit alone because it's already been designed for what it's designed for. So. I'm going through and I'm uh, laying out some of these components here on a piece of plexi glass. Uh, I'm drilling through for the contacts. I'm going to uh, glue these down into place and then build the circuit across the back and then um, one of each for each cabinet. Those will get built and uh, hoping this works out, hoping it sounds good. These cabinets are, they call them bookshelf cabinets and they sound small, but I mean, if you look this that's uh, pretty bad lighting there but this is a deep this is a deep cabinet it's pretty it's pretty sizable so uh, it'll be able to reproduce some good sounds even with these um, smaller size uh, drivers on them and uh, yes yeah, so that's where I'm at that's the progress I'm getting this stuff together I'm trying to do a bunch of math to figure out um, these crossover points it's uh, a complex crossover, a standard crossover is usually just a capacitor and an inductor. This is a, a third and a fourth order for the tweeter and the, the woofer. Um, so there's a lot of like components in there shaping the sound. So doing the best I can because I'm way in way over my head. So I will update this in progress as I go along. I'm going to build uh, one of these out and I'm actually going to do some microphone testing and look at the actual frequency responses and see if I need to make some adjustments and hopefully I can get some help from some other experts uh, around the internet and try to get these tuned up as best. I'm just basically trying to use the components that I've already paid for because at this point I've got a bunch of money stacked up in this stuff and I really would like to utilize as much as I can of it and stop bleeding money and purchasing some more stuff. So. Anyways, that's the process um, where I'm at right now, and I will update as I move along. All right, quick update on these. Today is tomorrow, and I've been working on uh, trying to get this set up. I've gotten the drivers uh, mounted 
uh, loosely. Just well, that one only the tweeter only gets three screws with three screws on uh, the mid here to get it all stuffed. I got the um, poly uh, fill stuffing in there for a decent amount to start with. I started laying out the uh, crossover. I'm still testing. I don't have the exact values that I need, so um, some things are doubled up in places just to get me the values that I need. So I've been running some tests. I've been testing the drivers individually, um, testing them separately. I picked up a, a small calibrated microphone. Um, nothing expensive, but it does come with its own actual calibration file, so it's a good reference um, to go from on there. And then this is hooked up to the computer. So I can run some sweeps for sound. I'll show you what that looks like. So that's the frequency sweep. And then this is what it graphs it as off the microphone. Um, we'll clean this up with a little bit of filtering. So you can kind of see the response here, um, SPL sound level on your Y-axis, frequency is rising across your X-axis. Looks like I got some like action going on as soon as like 20 hertz there. Not really doing much until about, what's that, 50? The 60 hertz really coming alive, which is pretty decent for a little six inch mid bass. And there's the rest of your frequency curve. Still pretty lumpy, still a lot of work that I had to do to try to get rid of some of this, either changing my testing or bringing up this midsection here on the crossover. And also you can see that on the upper end of my tweeter still a little high. So I probably have to adjust this with an, um, an L pad, uh, resistor circuit on the tweeter end there. I think it was originally designed to be competing with the dual mid ranges so that's why uh, it was designed a little hot so I will have to adjust that and bring it down. It's already been adjusted down but I'll have to bring it down some more. If I pull up the overlays here I can kind of graph them on top of each other. Let's get rid of these double lines here of these recent ones. So this is the overall frequency response overlaid with the individual drivers. Um, so if I grab, see if I can figure out the right one. So that, that's the overall. So here you have your, um, the mid driver and then where it crosses over and rolls off. And then you have your tweeter as it rolls on as the frequency goes up. And then if I go and, and add that back, that is the R summation of both of them together. Still got some issues in here. Like I was just showing in the lower end, maybe a little peaky here, but I mean right here, which is I guess normally the hardest part at the crossover point seems to be pretty flat. Um, these seem to be summing pretty good, which means they're not out of phase fighting each other, which is what I was worried about because I changed my impedances there, which is still a little high on the top end, but I think I can That'll be easy to bring this side of the tweeter down a little bit. Um, but in here, in this range, this might take a little bit of work. I do have another um, inductor coming in that's going to change this value a little bit. So I imagine that, I'm hoping that it's going to bring this down just a slight bit. So we will see how that works. If not, I might have to make some more adjustments in here, either to try to relieve here or just to bring this down as I bring down the top end, just bring this this year down and this down but anyways it's complicated just trying to figure it out um, a bunch of math and I'm trying to not have to buy every size component you know inductor and capacitor and resistor that you ever could and then just keep experimenting I'm um, trying to buy quality parts so they're kind of expensive so um, they are going to they are costing me but I think that um, in the future. If I were to do this again, I think I would have started with a pile of much cheaper parts just to experiment and test with. And then once I get it nailed down, really move up to the higher quality stuff um, for the sound quality later. But it is what it is. I got a couple leftover parts here from the original build. Um, when my other rest of my parts come in, I will 
get back to reassembling this um, and then do my testing again and obviously I'm going to get a better setup. I'm not going to be using a chair and some PVC. I'm gonna, I, just, I was excited to get this set up and testing this kind of see where I was as a baseline to see how close I was but I'm close enough now where I'm excited to keep moving forward so it, it's done its purpose but I will get this set up better and I will also work on the gating so I can try to get rid of some of the room reflections here and then I will get back to this crossover that was assembled. I started stealing parts off, but I'll get back to a uh, final assembly of the crossovers and then they'll be headed over to Sarah's house once I'm happy enough that they're uh, reasonable and, and uh, comfortable to listen to and then let her put some hours and put some breaking in on, on them and then uh, maybe if I need to, they're easy enough to transport, I'll be able to steal them back and do, do some more retesting on them and make some adjustments uh, as we need to or maybe even to you know suit her taste we're not doing any critical listening here it's more just for us to enjoy listening to i know that she likes hers um a little more uh boomy and and a little less um uh the tweeter on the tinny on the, on the top and that's why i was really focusing on bringing those tweeters down i know that she does not like that uh, super crisp harsh uh, high so I'll bring them down so it's smoother for her to listen to and um, Yeah, so that's what we're doing. That's where it's at I will update again once I get some uh, the rest of these parts in and I'm able to set up for my final testing and Then uh, I guess the final video will be the final assembly of the crossovers and all the parts I still have to build the second cabinet and then um, some final testing Anyways, that's all we're at. That's where we're at. And uh, I will talk to you later.